This is a HeadGum Podcast. Here's a question. What is care slash of? Care of is a monthly subscription vitamin service made from effective quality ingredients personally tailored for your exact needs. So I got an email and they were like, take this quiz. So I took a quiz, super easy, super fun, super chill, lots of pictures, truly kept me engaged, bright colors, good for me. And it literally designed the vitamins that I should be taking. And truly I read through it and I was like, this is right. I should be taking these vitamins. And there's tons of benefits to vitamins. So even if you try to maintain a healthy diet, guess what? It can be hard to get all those nutrients your body needs for long-term health. Vitamins also fill the important gaps that your body is missing from your diet. And get this, 90%. It's a lot of people. That's almost all the people. They fall short of the FDA recommended guidelines for at least one vitamin or nutrient. Also, the recommendations are built on clinical research with traditional medicine, with input from doctors and nutritionists. It includes individually wrapped packets with your specific vitamins and supplements for easy grab and go. Because you can't be shaking stuff out of bottles being like, what's this and the other thing? Nope, these are just wrapped up for you. And guess what? It costs about 20% less uh, when compared to similar brands at drugstores and local health food stores. So for 25% off your first month of personalized Care of Vitamins, visit careof.com and enter the promo code DATEME for 25%. I'm saying it again because you might have missed it, but you get 25 to 5% of your first month of personalized vitamins via Care of. Visit Take care of dot com. The promo code is date me. What a treat. You'll be swallowing big old vitamins in no time. Bye bye. Why won't you date me? It is a podcast where I try to figure out how I'm still single, even though I have no gag reflex and enjoy giving blowjobs. My guest today is my dear friend. I love her so much. We used to perform together in New York. Now she's in L.A. and she writes for a show called Corporate. It's Langan Kingsley. Wow, thank you. You're welcome. Um, So I'm here in beautiful downtown Los Angeles. (laughs) Um, And what do we talk about today? Oh, we talk about, I just said it, why I'm still single. Oh, why you're single. Even though I have no gag reflex and love giving blowjobs. Yeah. Do you like giving blowjobs, Langan? I feel like I'm not going to answer that question on a podcast. That's fair. I love it. (laughs) (laughs) It's something you you, you grow to... They kind of grow into. Fair for some people, but for me, I love them. And I feel like I'm in the minority as a person in general and in that respect. Well, me, yeah. I mean, there's a lot of complicated social factors that I think go sure. into that, which is, you know, pr- uh, the prioritization of male pleasure over female pleasure sure. and the uh, subsequent. Uh, <laughs> Uh, submissive role that places on the female and oh. perhaps part of the you know negative history of uh, oral sex <laughs> in relating to men is sure. some of those social factors. Sure. Beautiful downtown LA. Thanks you for coming down yeah, here. <laughs> that's what you want, right? It is what I want. Yeah. So have you ever, I don't know this, have you ever online dated? I have, yes. You were on OkCupid? OkCupid. Yes, and then okay, so like the notice. early days of Tinder, but I wasn't on it for ah, long. Did you have any luck? No. <laughs> but I think I, I think the secret to online dating, or it's not really a secret. I think it's just like everything else. You, mm-hmm. you probably just have to keep doing it 
forever until you find someone like it's a numbers game i think and so i just I have didn't have do, high enough numbers what is it like ten thousand hours before you're a master at something yeah so ten thousand <laughs> dates before you don't masturbate oh, because you'll have a I'll sex have somebody partner. yeah i mean even if i do have a sex partner i still feel like i would masturbate that's fair just because i mean there's going to be times where he says, no, thank you. And I have to go, I respect that. Yeah. I will do my own thing and you can just sleep. Wow. That's very woke. <laughs> I mean, with all this sex crazy stuff going on, you got to wake up a little bit. <laughs> yeah. You got to. Um, yeah. I don't want you outed as a Hollywood. <laughs> <laughs> well, I figure if 10 years from now, if someone writes a fucking like think piece about me, I'll be like, yeah. 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 That's. That's yeah. what I wanted at the time. Well, this makes it sound like you are <laughs> I'm like raping around, <laughs> yeah. but I'm not. Right. Uh, sometimes. Well, I just learned that after a weekend, I can't come to work and look at the crew and go, "How's everyone's weekend, y'all? Fuck," because that's not nice. Yeah. Marcy broke it down for me. She was like, "Nicole, if your friend was like my boss Gary in front of everybody, looked at me in the face and said, did you fuck this weekend?" She's like, "How would you feel?" I was like, "I'd be mad at Gary. He's not a he's not a nice guy." Right. She was like, "That you're Gary. You're bad." And I was like, "Oh." Yeah. Even though I mean it in jest, it's not good. Well, it's probably not the best thing, but also I will say I think not and not to say women can't be sexual predators or harassers, mm -hmm. but Part of it is a little bit like can white be, you know, a can, um, well, I guess people of other races can be racist, but I think it's like a power dynamics issue sure. too. So you're not in trouble now, but maybe stop. <laughs> I have stopped. And if I do say something that I feel may have crossed the line, I will say it almost immediately. I'll be like, did that cross the line? I am very sorry if it did, and you can tell me. Yeah. So I'm trying. It's all very interesting. Yeah. It's and what a f time to be alive. What a time to be alive. Drake and Future said it first. What a time. What a time to, to be, be alive. alive. So when you were on OK Cupid, yes. did anything awful happen? Um, nothing ter. I mean, just the usual stuff of like men sending you very over sexual like messages mm -hmm. and um kind of with no like entree to it but nothing really bad happened i would say the worst part about being on it was um i don't know just everyone's the same <laughs> like it everyone because now tinder you don't you don't have to explain as much about yourself mm -hmm. which is kind of nice and okay cupid you had to answer 1000 questions mm -hmm. um and so everyone, lo lo what I remember about New York, OkCupid, okay Brooklyn, everyone loved coffee and they loved <laughs> bourbon and there was no typical Friday night for mm -hmm. them. Um, yeah, so it was pretty awful just seeing how boring most people are. I'll tell you something, it's much of the same out here. People love coffee, they love movies, and they love their whiskey. That's true, yeah, but and then they... But they don't drink as much of it because they can't sure, drive. Sure, because bars close early here. And yeah, I don't know. It's tough. I did feel like dating in New York was way different and just easier than out here. Because I could go to a bar in New York and talk to anybody. Out here, it's like, I don't know. I don't really want to talk to these people. They seem awful. Yeah. I mean, everyone has its, everyone has its own kind of awful. Mm -hmm. like, New York has the awful like guys who are think they're like trying to write a novel and <laughs> love growing their beards and i'm so far away from you right yes. now it's very not sorry intimate. um and then here it's a bunch of guys who are like trying to get a skateboard company off the ground or something. <laughs> uh, that's the first time i've ever heard that and it's very funny oh okay nice trying to get a skateboard company off the ground um so literally you know ollies and whatever they do <laughs> kick flips ollies uh slam dunks yeah so you have had a boyfriend for most of the time you've been out here in la and then when you broke up with your boyfriend when you were out here is this too much information <laughs> no it's fine can i ask did you online date at all i didn't because i was working on healing myself and ah. um i think that 
It's interesting. I think I, I saw there's um, an Instagram cartoonist. I, mm-hmm. like, I follow a lot of Instagram artists, sure. um, and her name's Mari Andrew. Do you know her? Um, Marissa? Okay. Um, Marissa is my producer, right? You're my producer? <laughs> nice. <laughs> She's um, just this lady in the room who listens. But it, she had kind of like how women and men are dealt are taught to deal with breakups. And for mm-hmm. men, it's like use women's bodies <laughs> to get over it. Oh, and for women, it's like work on yourself and uh, look within yourself and uh do you think it we're told to look within ourselves because it's like you ultimately are the one that ruined this relationship so you need to fix something inside of you maybe partially but i think that it's another thing which i've been thinking about a lot lately with all these guys who just can't get enough of jerking off in front of women <laughs> which it's like just I, my big thing is like just jerk off at home mm-hmm. that's where everyone's supposed to do it it's fine mm-hmm. there just close the door of your room or your although i would love to see a lady start jerking herself in front of people. No, don't say that. Why not? Don't it's a say very that. That's, a not, that's not the take you want. And I think want. it'd be very that's not funny the take you to want. see a lady who's just like, I know you want it. Oh. No, it's not. Because <laughs> you no. can't just like whip out your clip. No. You got, it's a very involved thing. <sighs> you got to like get on your back a little bit. <laughs> oh, no. I, I mean that's not the take that's not the hot take I that's should not take the that. take um, uh, the take should be everyone goes home everyone to don't masturbate in front of other people <laughs> unless there is a very clear uh, unless it's something that's been very agreed upon by both parties but what if you're a greeter at Walmart and <laughs> your not... way of greeting people is it's... to pull down your pants, pull out your clit, and start saying, come on. I would say especially come then. On, especially come then. On. <laughs> All right, fair. Um, you're right. Your uh, counterexample was the most <laughs> inappropriate case of <laughs> You don't think a greeter at Walmart should No, show that you clip should off? have said, like, what if you're a porn star? Uh, and that would have been a way to make your oh, point. Okay. Um, but even in porn, I really think there's lines. I think there's there a- are, There are. Well, that porn star, um, Jam- James Dean, right? Isn't that yes, his name? James he Dean, got in he trouble was for- choking ladies when they said no. Yeah. And it is an interesting- Consent is- Consent is crazy because I was talking to this <laughs> dude- Well, no, like- the consent itself is not crazy, but like pe- the way people think about consent is crazy. Yeah. I was talking to this guy and he was like, man, you know, like the definition of consent has like changed so much since I was in high school. And I was like, no, right. the definition of consent has not changed. The way you've approached the definition of consent has changed. The way that men are now being educated about consent has changed. But like a woman saying no is the same in 95, 2000, 2005, right. the year 36. It's like, wow, gay rights have really changed since I was in high school. And it's like, no, well, they're just getting yeah. the same things that everybody else has. It's interesting because like consent seems to be like race where white men feel like uh, white people are being replaced or whatever. And it's like, we're not being replaced. We're just getting to step up some stairs to get to where you are. And it's like right. with consent, it's like, we're just getting up the stairs to understand what it actually means. But like, no means no in any context. I could be naked in a bed with you. And if the minute I say no is the minute it's done. Well, and also to examine what, what again, going back to like po- power dynamics and, I, going back to talking about how women are sort of taught to like work on themselves and mm-hmm. stuff, I think that's partially what's coming out about this. Is um, I just had read Rebecca Solnit's book, uh, "The Mother of All Questions," like a little while before My this happened. My therapist keeps telling me to. It's read really that. good. And then I saw Jenny Slate posted on Instagram a quote from it that a lot of people were sharing. Which, mm-hmm. w- when I read it, also, which is, um, uh, but. But in it, she talks about how patriarchy like racism and white supremacy affect everyone as they don't just affect the oppressed person. Mm -hmm. It kind of like rots all of society. And I think that's part of it is that men have not been taught uh, or have been discouraged from 
exploring and cultivating the emotional side of themselves. Yes. And so they don't know how to self-repair. They don't know when things hurt them or mm -hmm. they just don't it's know like how to deal with a, it. the a guy cries, he gets called a pussy or whatever, as opposed to like, oh, this is a man who can deal with his emotions. Right. And I think a lot of guys, like, they can't even – sometimes even label their emotions mm -hmm. because they don't they don't have the they haven't developed the capacity to do that and so that is what i kind of hope changes more is i remember when i was in college betty Friedan came to speak and she Who? Oh boy, she wrote the feminine mystique, which is like Never one of read the <laughs> you don't have to but it was it... Uh, but should i I don't think so. I think it's a lot of like. I still haven't read that book you sent me called How to Be a Woman. Well, I forgot Langan said she was going to send it to me, and I opened up this package, and it was a book that said How to Be a Woman, <laughs> and I didn't realize it was like a memoir. And I was like, someone, um, someone is, I <laughs> someone's being really shady, and they don't think I'm a woman, and they're going to try to teach me. I feel like I could never send you a book again unless it's <laughs> no, like. No, you uh, can. You can send me a book. I just <laughs> honestly forgot about it. Well, that's, yeah, and that's it her. It felt wild. <laughs> um, but. Anyway, she she came to speak and she also was in the I, – I think she had dementia at the, mm -hmm. at the time, which was very uncomfortable because whoever was handling her was still getting, like, speaking fees for oh, her, no. even though it was clear from what she was talking about. And and then I, I went to Wellesley and a bunch of people from Smith, like, came out. And mm -hmm. Wellesley is pretty, like, liberal and Smith is like, oh, boy, they, they're radical there. <laughs> and so it was like the LGBT like, the club being like, what, what about trans women? And, I mean, fair point, but also this was like an – woman in her 80s with like dementia mm -hmm. answering the same questions <laughs> over and over again. And I was like, I don't think any of us are going to get the answer we want. <laughs> but one thing she did say in the midst of her haze was she talks about we don't need to make like part of the question is how do we make women, you know, women more successful in the workplace or uh, lean it, you know, lean in kind of stuff. And she's mm -hmm. like, that's not that's only part of the question. You also have to make the world's more like better for women basically mm -hmm. you have to make you know why is our corporate environment um like maternity leave and all these things like that's not really the issue the issue is that like jobs consume people and people are expected to give all their hours that she oh. she didn't say that this is me oh the dog just yeah barked. if you oh. heard that that is a dog barking there's a dog named maya yeah maya in she's here. really cute she's very cute she's black and white so she's solving racism yeah she is here's a question that has nothing to do with tinder or so why why do you think women are treated so poorly why do you think we're hated so much because uh we can be because people it's the same reason anyone discriminates against anyone it's because they're that's how society is organized is there has to be sort of a ruling. There doesn't have to be, but mm -hmm. the way our world has been organized. Also, think about this. Well, like if you had someone who cooked and cleaned for you and raised all your kids, <laughs> wouldn't you be reluctant to let go of that as well? Oh, yeah. And was like a sexual receptacle you could just use whenever you wanted. Like I would love to have someone who if if I got married and knew that person was going to like keep my house clean and keep things nice and organize my, my life. Kids and, and I got to go drink at work. Are you kidding? I would love yeah, that. I guess I would truly, truly love that. And, uh, you know, I, I think that's a very uh, I, I mean, I would love that. So why give that? Up? I guess that makes sense. <laughs> yeah. Lion, I want you to read my tinder profile and tell me what you think is good and what you think is bad well you already know what i i think but uh how's it going on tinder um so far it it's not going well so okay also if you want to see what langan is seeing you can go to my facebook page it's nicole byer comedy on facebook.com and if you go to my photos, there is an album that just says Tinder, and it'll be my Tinder and my Bumble pictures. So, Langan, it is a podcast. You got to describe what okay. you're saying. I'm seeing the first picture. I, I remember you've had this up on your online dating <laughs> profile for a while because yes. I remember this, Since I think, from OkCupid. Okay yeah. And it's you wearing a shirt with a smiling face on it with a lot of teeth, and you look very pretty, but then you're holding an mm -hmm. enormous fake penis. Yeah. Like way too big. And yeah. I think this is a terrible first picture to have. <laughs> I think it immediately makes people feel that like that's what you want and mm -hmm. they're not going to measure up. I think it 
you look very but pretty in it. And it's the thing. It's like two feet tall. So how could you ever think you could measure up? I, I don't know because you're not providing any context there. You're not saying that. <laughs> and then your your description is, I got a fat ass, so if you're not into it, bye, bye, bye. Uh-huh. And I think you – talk about your positive I, – I mean, not that that's not positive. I think my fat ass is very positive. Then talk about that in a positive way. So don't say well, if you're okay. not into it. It's like immediately putting people off. So be well, like, here's... I got a fat ass and I love it. <laughs> <laughs> Like okay. the way you're phrasing it, it makes it seem like it's a bad thing that turns people off. Okay. And if you like it, celebrate it. <laughs> well, I think my whole thought process was because I've had men message me and be like, you are fat. And I'm like, you're not telling me anything I don't know. If you don't like it, then please don't. Just you go don't away. need to say anything. Yeah, I think um, you just need to. Just those people it. are not worth addressing okay. at all. Okay. You know, so just delete those messages and what like why would they that that's like cra- and also I, this those are the path, pathological people who are going to do that regardless. Sure. You know. Yes. So that, but since I put that up, I've gotten less people being like, "Hey, you're fat." Okay, so then I'd put it lower. Okay. I wouldn't maybe make that worse. Sure, keep reading. <laughs> okay, I like people with a sense of humor because life is too fucking long not to laugh. I like it's that. It's so long. People say life is short. It's not. Even if you die at 50, that's 50 fucking years. Yeah, that's a long time. It's too long. Um, I'd say maybe I like people with a sense of humor because life is too fucking long not to laugh. What I say? Because. Oh. Just because it makes you... You're Seem a smart like I'm person. Educated. Yeah. Am I? You are. <laughs> so, and then DTF down to figure skate or fuck or farm or fly a kite, whichever is easiest. Well, here's the thing: most yeah. people on Tinder are going to find fucking easier. <laughs> so maybe I will say this: even if you said DTF down to figure skate, that's kind of funny. Mm-hmm. And th- and they also get the point that. Your DTF? I, I don't know. Because you like effing. <laughs> <laughs> Langan, you can say fucking. I did already. Say it. Fucking. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then the, I like the pictures. Um, but I think I wouldn't. I, I just think the dick pic is, is bad. too much to lead okay. with. Um, you have to describe the rest of the pictures because it's a podcast. I know but people. Okay, so then the other picture is you in front of a Christmas tree yeah. and you're wearing a really pretty sparkly Can you tell outfit. that I'm humping it? No, and that's a good thing because I think it's just a nice picture. <laughs> okay. Um, And then ones of you in a green room. But there's a bunch of like snacks in the background. Yeah, of it. baby, there's you better keep me fed chips. when I'm working. <laughs> but you look very pretty in it. Thank and you. where was that taken? That was at the MTV Movie Awards two, three years ago. And then there's one of you in a spandex bodysuit. Can you tell that I'm humping that bookcase? It looks like you're climbing the bookcase. <laughs> I am just climbing and, it. Yeah, okay, good. And then there's one of you making a snarly face in a heart. Can you tell that I'm humping the air? I'm just kidding. I'm you're just not. Sitting there. And then there's a nice one of you with your dog. Can you tell that I'm humping my dog? No, because you're not. <laughs> um, hmm. And then you list your. I don't know, but it's also hard because people, you're you're like a people recognize you. Some do, some don't. Okay. Um, that would be, I if I were you, I'd be very scared of all the people who want to do comedy Uh uh-oh there she go again more barks okay while that dog barks we're gonna take a commercial break and we'll be back real quick to talk more with langan and we're back so you were saying that it might be hard for me to date people when they know who I am? Well, I'm just saying, like, for me, if I had a TV show and I – and ugh, there are just so many f- fucking men who wanted – who think they're good at comedy and <laughs> want to do it. You are correct. That I would be afraid, like, that they're just, like, getting in touch with me because they know I'm a, 
a comedy person. Well, and- some people will just straight up say it. Some people will just be like, oh, I think you're very funny. This guy I've been talking to for a couple of days, he's not attractive to me, but he's like, fine, I guess. So his first message was, oh, I guess we've been talking for a while. Oh, no. Oh, so, oh, since the fifth. So he said, my friend Greg, G-R-A-I-G, wanted me to let you know he thinks you're hilarious. So I said, Greg, Greg, your friend has an insane name. And then we've continued talking. And it's mostly me just yelling at him. But he seems to like it. Uh, He has not asked me out because that's the MO of a lot of dudes on here. Well, this is what I, I mean, and I've said this to you for years, but this is what this is goes back to what we we're talking about. I think the reason is you put out that you want people to have sex with you. Sure, I do want to have sex with people. Because you want that and you put out you put out like in a matter of speaking. <laughs> I think you don't realize that you're a very loving, kind, wonderful person and that you if you do want to be with someone who's nice to you and mm-hmm. kind, then you need to not be like, I just want someone to fuck me or whatever. Well, That's my Nicole. <laughs> <laughs> it was very good. Do it again. I just want someone to fuck me raw. I'm Ew, Nicole Byer. raw? I don't know. That was no, the dirtiest Lennon. thing I could think I of. I use protection with strangers because... Strangers bring strange things. That's true. Stranger My. things. <laughs> Strangers bring stranger things to the bedroom. I've met a couple guys who were nice at first from my Tinder profile as it is. And then they ended up not being nice. And then I've met people who have misled me with the way they look. Yeah. And I feel like I'm brutally honest on my profile. Like, what you see is what you get. There's yeah. no hidden surprises. I'm not fatter than my picture. I'm not thinner. Than, I look exactly the way I look in my pictures in person. And I don't know. I feel like since I'm being so honest that other like men should be honest about it. Yeah, I think... And and I get what you're saying, and I think there's an argument to be made there, but also it's online dating. Every, dating, I everyone guess. has to finesse. You have to hide all the worst parts of yourself. I guess. I met a guy, you heard all about it, the guy that I met over the summer that I was like, I'm in love with him. I'm going to marry him. And then he just like fell off the fucking face of the planet. But there were a lot of, I would say there were some like flags there. Oh, tons and tons and tons start. of flags. So that's what I'm saying is you, and I, I don't blame you, and he was nice to you, but I think that's what I'm saying is someone who's nice is nice throughout. <laughs> I know, and I don't know how to find that. I don't know how to find a man who's like nice in and out or all around. It's, I don't know, it's really hard. And he also, he like knew that I did comedy or whatever. Um but he like told me up front, he's like, I'm a fan of comedy and I know who you are, but it would be weird for me like not to say that. And I was like, I appreciate that. And I've had dudes who will wait. <laughs> I had one guy wait two dates before he told me he knew exactly who I was. Yeah. And I thought that loosely, was like exactly. creepy. Yeah, he loosely exactly knew who I was. Now streaming on Facebook. <laughs> um, Yeah. It's, t- I mean, also the thing is like, dating is just sucks. It's horrible and it's bad. Mm-hmm. And... I don't think there's any – when I I was single for a very long time and I hated when people were like, oh, the thing you have to do is this and you're <laughs> not doing this and the reason is this. And it's like, oh, I don't know. Who knows? Well, it's I'm looking time. for those things and nobody really has them for me. No one's like, I think it's here's just, the secret. I think you just got to like hope you – you just got to keep getting out there and then hope someone oh, who's Oh, man, just keep nice. getting back on that fucking horse. Yeah. It's just annoying because I, like, I'll meet someone and I'll put all my eggs in that man basket and then he'll stomp all over them. And then I'm like, well, now these eggs are broken on the floor and I can't even use them. Yeah, well, it's also hard because you have a... And I think part of what I'm talking about is, like, part of your persona and a lot of your comedy is you're a very sexually open person Mm -hmm. which is good and rare for women and I think then men assume that that's all you are all you want you know Mm -hmm. and 
Well, I do have this, like, it's not a hard, fast rule, but if I've, like, made it to three dates with you, I'll make you wait at least, like, a month before you can come see me perform. That's fair. I just, because I truly just want to, like, separate who I am as a person and, like, what I do on stage. But the hard part is there's Google. <laughs> there is Google. Can you can Google me. Yeah. Uh, you can truly look at my Instagram and you'll see lots of things. I don't know. It's just, it's very hard to. Well, what what do you want? I want a man to love me. Yeah, but what kind of, well, okay. like, name five things you want. So this, this was an, another piece of advice I got when I was single is list five things you want in someone else and then try and become those I things yourself. I have more than five. Okay. Wow. Maybe that's part of the <laughs> Okay. This is what I want in a man slash person because I don't rule out women because that seems stupid. Yeah. One, kind. Two, thoughtful. Loyal. Uh, a working professional in their field, an equal to have their own money slash financially stable. Someone who's proud of me, proud to be with me, in touch with their feelings slash can express emotion from a nice family. Because I want a nice family who loves me. Uh, someone I'm sexually attracted to and satisfied by. Someone who feels passionately about me. Someone I want to be around because I've fucked so many people that I don't like. Uh, doesn't want kids. I really don't want them. Uh, someone who compliments me, someone who's fun as fuck, someone who's funny, someone who finds me funny, someone who's respectful, someone who drinks, but not an alcoholic, someone who has good friends slash likes my friends, and then someone who loves my body in any way that it is. That all seems reasonable. I will say certain things. What if you met someone who didn't drink but was like okay with as you long know. as he gets on a boat with me and I can have a glass of rosé. Yeah, that's what I'm that's saying. That's fine. So maybe I don't want to be with someone who's going to make me feel weird because I'm drinking. Exactly. Yeah, and I think that's fair. But I know because there are people who are with people who don't drink but aren't mm -hmm. like it's not weird. Yeah, I just need someone who's just like okay with it. And I just quit smoking and Congrats. Thank you. It's been an uphill battle and I had a cigarette last night. I had two last <laughs> night. But <laughs> I haven't bought a pack of cigarettes in like three months. That's good. I haven't bought a pack of cigarettes, I think, since September. What month are we in? Uh, November. Yeah. So that's a yeah. decent run. Um, and I'm just now getting used to being around people who are smoking and not being like, can I have one? Yeah. Although I did do that yesterday. Do you feel better? Mm, yeah. I My lungs feel better. <laughs> that's good. They Your athlete's cough has gone my away? My athlete's cough has kind of gone away. It hasn't yeah. completely gone away. Um, Nicole has a cough, which she calls an athlete's <laughs> cough, which is a, s a smoker's cough. Uh -huh. But it feels better when I say athlete's, athlete's cough. cough. It makes yeah. it seem like I'm really working hard. Well, okay. So my question about your list is, do you think you're all those things? Let me look at them. <laughs> um, I do think I'm kind and thoughtful and loyal. Yeah, I do work. I have money. Uh, that I, I like I'm pretty financially stable um I'm kind of in touch with my emotions and feelings I do repress a lot and then I do yell at people a lot um I guess I love my sister mm -hmm. so I think I'm from my <laughs> my dad no I don't think I'm from a nice family you um, are from a nice family ish but you're just, fun. it's complicated. But you have a d different situation. My family situation's complicated. I got a sister and I got one, two dead parents. Yeah. <laughs> so if your parents are around, they that would be a nice yes, family. Yes, they, they were nice people, but now they they're dead people. They just made the mistake so, of dying. <laughs> yeah, they made this like really bad mistake and they were like, you know what? We got to check out. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I think I'm sexually attracted. I think I can satisfy someone. I think someone could feel passionate about me. I think someone would want to be around me. Um, Do you want to be around yourself? Wow. Wow, that's wild. Sometimes I do. <laughs> These are the questions men don't ask themselves. <laughs> I, it, that's a very interesting question. I would say I want to be around myself 85% of the time. And then 15% of the time I'm just like, upset or whatever and like don't understand why I can't get things done and get frustrated. Also, I think I have a little bit of depression, but also 
I might not, I might just work a lot. And when I have downtime, I'm yeah. tired. So it might not be depression. So who the fuck knows? Well, so maybe that's part of it is if you're, if you're working so much and like doing so much that you are exhausting yourself, maybe that's an area in which you need to cut back on things. So sorry, and take can't do it. Yourself. Can't do it. <laughs> you have to be in downtown LA. I have Sunday. to be in downtown LA on a Sunday recording four hours of a podcast on the, <laughs> on the two days off that I have from yeah. work right now. I I just yes, I have to. I will I I know. Yeah. I wrap in a week and a half and I'm already getting uh anxiety about what's next. I don't like downtime. I like to always be working. Well, that's I think you have to because I'm I'm kind of a similar person and that mm -hmm. I don't I I don't work as hard as you. I would say I don't think many people do, but I'm not a sit still type person. Like mm -hmm. I don't like to just be sitting around, which mm -hmm. is a bit. My boyfriend loves to just like sit there and be <laughs> quiet and. I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> what are we gonna do um and so but that's something you have to i think that's hard that then you have to work on it's like why am i mm -hmm. i think i self-diagnose i self-diagnose myself as adhd <laughs> three weekends ago and I, I would agree with you you think i have adhd yes okay no one has confirmed my diagnosis i don't think it's as bad as mine Yes, that's but true. <laughs> I've met your mom. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, and she definitely has yes. it. Yeah. And I think you I don't I think it's pretty slight. Yeah, it's also another thing that gets misdiagnosed in women a lot mm -hmm. as like depression or anxiety mm -hmm. or and it's and and because women think like why can't I'm a bad person? Why am I not doing all these yeah, things? Yeah, I would get to the point where like on weekends where I'd be like, "Okay, I have to write something." Or me and our friend, we wrote a pilot together, Phil uh where i like couldn't do the outline like i was having such trouble doing the outline but then like once me and phil did the outline i was like oh by now everything has happened and i get it and i like wrote it in a day and then when i take my medication i can function and i can right. do things and i'm a functioning person for a full 12 hours when i don't have a scheduled plan for the day right like when i wasn't taking medication I could work, I could work a 16 hour day, know my lines, hit my mark, do it. But it's because that's all I had to do. So like on a weekend, right. on a Saturday, I'd wake up and I go, oh, I don't have to go to work. I don't really know how to focus enough to get the things that I need to do. I'll just sleep. That's what I did yesterday. I slept all day. I took three naps yesterday. Cause I was like, I have, well, you I have like six are... things that I need to get done. Yeah. But you're working all that. That's like, yes. you're not sleeping during the week. But I think, I'm the type of person that's like, I'll be in the middle of a task and then mm -hmm. I'll start another task. Oh, yeah, <laughs> this that's is definitely. fascinating for people to listen. Well, to. maybe a lady will listen to this and go, this is what this that's is true. me. Because that's, that's what happened. That's how I thought to go see a psychiatrist or like bring it up to my therapist. I was talking to another female friend who was like, yeah, I couldn't write jokes. I would zone out in front of TV and I would have uh, little piles of shit around my house that I couldn't get to. And I like started crying because I was like, that's me. That's I opened my mail every six months. I like didn't pay bills because I like couldn't figure out because I was like, all right, once you open the mail, then you have to do something with the mail. Right. And I, I was just like, I can't. I think for me, what I found is I just need to, things to be like super structured mm -hmm. and, and then I'll be OK. But when when the structure is not there, that's when it's unstructured mm -hmm. that I'm kind of like a slippery I'll slope. I'll give you my psychiatrist information, <laughs> but just to warn you, her hours are wild. She's like, I'm not there on Mondays. Tuesday, I'm there for 35 <laughs> minutes. Wednesdays, you got to find me. Thursdays, I'm there from 9 a.m. to 9.2. <laughs> 902. 902. She her hours are crazy. That's and she's wild. so expensive. Yeah. Well, and you like pay I'm... for like 20 minutes to be like, um, it's working. Or like, mom, it's not working. And I feel like I'm gonna kill people. I'm rich, so it shouldn't be a problem. Oh baby, you got that Comedy <laughs> Central money. I have my job <laughs> ending <laughs> in a few weeks. Ah. Yeah, but you'll be <laughs> fine. You're very funny. Oh, um, here's you. a question. I know that you are not into dating women and you currently have a boyfriend yes. but if you were into dating women and you didn't have a boyfriend would you date me yeah would you i think so i don't really think it would... after knowing me for all these years you would date me oh <laughs> i mean it, it wouldn't go well you don't think so or maybe i'd keep you in like 
check. Maybe I'd be a good, but I'd kind of have to be, I think I'd have to be like a wife to you. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if I could do that, if I could put my own ambitions like on the back burner. Oh, do you think, I often think I either need someone just as busy as me or like someone who's just like, yes, I'll follow you around the world. I think that's why part of your thing of like that needs to be all this financial and like, I I think like, so I'm reading this book right now. Sorry, is this this too long? Are we wrapping? (laughs) I'm reading this book right now um, uh, about by a, a woman who's trans because I don't know I was just like I need to read more about this because I am Mm -hmm. not educated enough and but she talks about relationships and she's like we think of things as like male female Mm -hmm. and in those terms but there are so many other ways of looking at relationships because that's a very like gender binary way of viewing it so it's like it could be butch femme it could be top bottom it could be top top it could Mm -hmm. be bottom bottom it could be femme femme like so I think I think as women you think you need someone like equally strong as you but also you're like you're a very dominant strong person Mm -hmm. so maybe what you need is someone who's just like kind and makes you nice (laughs) dinners I think I would get mad at that person why because if they were just kind and made me nice dinners I'd be like what do you want my sister's a very kind nice person well you shouldn't marry your sister (laughs) are you sure I'm pretty sure but like we already know each other yeah I guess that's a good point and like I know she comes from a good family like her parents are great but you need someone but if it's a kind nice person who can call you on your bullshit and you're like why aren't you working and they'll be like Nicole I'm not working because I'm making you pasta right now you dumbass yeah, but like I think I need someone I don't know. I want someone who like has their own life. I don't want someone to become enraptured in me and have me be it. Oh, well, I understand. I mean, it's po- they could do their own thing, you I know. You need a lover. I think maybe maybe I don't want to be in a relationship. Maybe, maybe I you just should, want like a lover. <laughs> maybe you should have an affair with a married person. <laughs> Honestly, there's one married man that I would love to have an affair with. Oh, don't do it. I well, I don't think I could because it's been years since I've seen him. I've tried to write many parts on my show where I get to kiss him, but he lives in New York and I nobody think I wants know to fly him out. You're talking about. Of course, you know. I love him so much. I won't say his name because it's not right. Good. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I do. I think I also want like an older man. Like I don't want. I keep like swiping on these like twenty six year old dudes where I'm like, no. you don't fucking have your shit together. Yeah, you need someone who. Ugh. We have a friend who her boyfriend has been divorced, mm-hmm. and she she's like, it's great. He is like been because he got divorced and then went to therapy and mm-hmm. figured his shit out. And that's what I think a lot I think a lot of men need therapy. They do. They definitely do. All men need therapy. Here's the thing. Okay. So your boyfriend has had other girlfriends or whatever and dated other people. Have you ever looked at their like dating like not their dating profile. Have you ever like looked at their Instagram? Have uh, you ever stalked yes. a girl that your boyfriend has dated? Okay, so I don't feel crazy. I think I figured out why I do it. That's but everyone does. That. That's I think why do you think you do it? Because um I think I like to torture myself. I'm a masochist. And um I also think it's just kind of you look and you're like what what is, about this person is like appealing. You mm-hmm. know that that kind of that kind of yeah. thing. Yeah. I didn't realize that that would be why I do it cuz I do it compulsively didn't and, i block this for you yes but guess what i have a second instagram account <laughs> i need to use that <laughs> that the, honestly the second instagram account is just in case i accidentally like one of their photos so they won't know it's me it'll be this woman named taylor that they don't know you are crazy, crazy. yes but but, <laughs> but it, i know where it's coming from but with with that you just have to be like i'm spending Hours An of unhealthy my life. amount of time yeah. stalking a woman that I don't know. But I think it's because I had a revelation. I think it's because they dated this guy that I couldn't please. So I'm trying to figure out what, what they, they do did. to please people. But the thing is, it it's not. It, but the thing then you have to realize it's never about that. It's just about timing and 
what when they met that person and what you know what I'm saying like yeah I and guess. you're you're better than anyone you ju- that's when you like blind self confidence has to come in and you have to be like well I'm also better than this person well it's weird because I do have, I have a very blind self confidence with like comedy and uh, work like. I don't know. I work and I'm like, I'm funny and I'm good and it's great and I love it. But then with men, I'm like, I don't know. Um, I often find myself being myself, but being a lesser of myself. So I don't upset them, upset them, scare them away or like have them be like, like one guy, I peed on his floor and <laughs> this is. This is uh, Dance Party EJ, away. the Jew that got away. Okay. Uh, he did the podcast and he was like, I don't think I could date you because I, I would feel like I would have to match you and like always be on and like have to be funny. And I don't want a guy to have to, I don't want him to feel like that. I don't, yes, he does need to be funny, but like he doesn't have to like always be like, you know. Well, and that's why I'm, that's what I'm saying is maybe you're the dom. Like I think two of you would be too much. But I also think what you find a person that is nice and you're mm-hmm. comfortable with, that's a good sign that – and that person likes you for who you are and you don't feel like you have to be a certain way for them. That's probably mm-hmm. a good sign that that's a good person to be around. Langan, why do you think I'm single? Um, Because – men are <laughs> bad <laughs> i think dating i think dating's really hard i think it's so um i i think most people settle and you haven't <laughs> and that's why i think you're single oh maybe i guess i should and you've been busy settle. you're busy with other things like you you're not spending all your time trying to find a boyfriend you're but then or a girlfriend. I'll, like, I'll have like like a month where I'm not do- like so this November and December are generally like pretty dead. Yeah, but then don't you want to do like things you want to do? Well, I'm trying to rent an island. <laughs> oh, right. That's why I you're single cuz you're you're, you're spending your spare time on <laughs> islands. <laughs> well, I like to just like relax and be in an ocean and like not have a care in the world. That's nice. I think you're a woman who with a career and it's ha- it's really difficult. I think that's why you're I think it's a very apparent answer to me. I don't think it has to do with you. I think it has to do with our society. Fair. So to answer that Liz Lemon question, is that Liz Lemon? Women can't have it all? Or is that just a general question? I mean, I think that's, that's a been addressed general everything. thing, but I could see it. <laughs> Maybe. I feel like it was a 30 Rock storyline. Probably. I don't know. Yeah. Good Lord. I guess it is hard because, like, my hours are crazy. You know. Yeah. The writer's room's, like, pretty and long I think, hours. I think it's, like, you can't have it all and you can't have it all at the same time, you know? And this mm-hmm. is a time in your life where your focus is on, like, what you want to be doing, and that's okay. But, like, the weirdest thing is it is the time in my life where I'm focused on, like, what I want, but there is never going to be a time in my life where I'm not focused on it because i realized i've i don't think i'm ever going to get to a point where like i'm happy and i'm like great i'll chill out for a couple of years because i'm like no i love working i love doing comedy i love touring and but i always i, I just i have think to that's keep fine going. i think that's totally fine you're I'll maybe just, just uh... single for the rest of my life but i mean i just don't want strange dicks anymore i want one one that i know is that true Yes, I think I just want one. Yes, that is definitely true. I want one nice big dick that I know. Then I think you need to, then I really, I honestly think you need to find someone who adores you and maybe is less ambitious, like, not that they aren't ambitious, but less of this sort of perfect image of a person you put together. Like, I think Mm -hmm. most of the things on your list are good, Mm -hmm. but I think you need to, like, open yourself up to maybe it's not going to be exactly what you're picturing. Okay. And I'm not saying, like, lower your standards. I'm just saying it could come in a different form. All right. What kind of form? Like a Maybe form a of woman. <laughs> well, I'm very open to dating women. Yeah. The only women I've interacted with on Tinder, though, are, like, thirsty bitches who are like, I yeah, know well, who you are. Yeah, Tinder's. And I want to come see a show. <laughs> and I think I love you already. 
Yeah. I, mean, I don't need They're that. all old. <laughs> <laughs> I want to um, see your show me. and eat your pussy. I broke out of the nursing home and I want to scoop your pussy. <laughs> um, yeah. But I think it'll be okay. Langan, thank you. I love Langan very much. She's one of my dear friends. Um, we have a very unlikely friendship. I didn't think you liked me at first. I didn't, well, no one thinks you like them. No one thinks you like them. You like me them. personally. Well, yeah, you're intimidating. I'm intimidating. We're both intimidating women. We're both very intimidating, very tall women. Lion's like 6'4, I'm 6'1. <laughs> We're hunkering down on people, <laughs> slamming down our comedy. <laughs> oh boy. Jerking off in front Just of Just jerking off in front of everybody. I'm pulling down my pants, pulling out my clit, saying, Welcome to Walmart. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, okay, so if you like this podcast, please subscribe. Also, please. rate it on iTunes, please. five stars, or wherever you can get a podcast. And if you comment, in the comments, if you hit on me, I will read it during a recording. So if you say something like, oh, I want you to sit on my face so I can wiggle my nose, I'll read it. Or That's if you the say, type of what? stuff you need to stop putting out there. <laughs> That's the type Don't of stuff I need to stop this. soliciting yeah, to myself. Yeah, stop soliciting this. Okay. Um, if, if you <laughs> write a comment like, hey, Nicole, you seem like a beautiful, wise person. <laughs> <laughs> as wonderful inside as you are outside. And I'd love to cook you endless dinners. <laughs> what is with you cooking dinner? I don't. I just think that's a, the most wonderful thing I could imagine is Someone cooking coming dinner? home and being like, I cooked dinner. Here's the thing. I hate most people's cooking. I specifically only like my mother's cooking. And she's dead, so I can't eat that. That's true. But but, but maybe this person would have the culinary skills of your of my mother. Mom? I hope so. Okay, so if you hit on me by saying, <laughs> I'll cook you dinner... And then say, Langan is right. I got a cookie dinner. I'll read it on the next podcast. Okay. Thank you so much for listening. I hope you loved every fucking thing about it. Bye-bye. Bye. That was a HeadGum Podcast.